Hello, so today's video is going to be on a mask I don't know loads about, but I can tell you a bit about it, so that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> this, and apologies already for the sort of bad voice and all that, I've had a cold and it's still not completely gone yet. This is the Bulgarian MR70, and it might actually be, if it's in Cyrillic, slightly different letters than that, but that's what the seller had it listed as. And basically, this isn't a gas mask, this is a fallout mask, as in it's designed to protect you from nuclear fallout, as in breathing in irradiated dust and ash and things like that, that would get into your lungs and do all sorts of damage. So, it's pretty simple, and I have the feeling it's based on what might be called the PY-60M, which is the Soviet similar mask, although I think that actually had charcoal in the filters, this doesn't. This is literally some sort of fabric, which may be asbestos, so when I wear it, I'm not going to wear it for very long. Um, sort of just kind of sandwiched inside there. Um, it's actually very effective what it is, it's a lot better than some of the cheap sort of half face masks you see. Um, as I said, this isn't a gas mask, the point of it is to protect you from fallout. Now, because people might get these confused, a, this is basically like a very good dust respirator. Now, when you have nuclear fallout, let's say you had a nuclear explosion, you've got stuff sucked into the nuclear sort of mushroom cloud and thrown out, that becomes your fallout. So you've got things basically contaminated by Cobalt-60, Cesium-137, Strontium-90, uh, Iodine-131, all that good stuff that will do lots of damage if it gets inside you. A lot of this can do damage from the outside as well, but if it gets in you it does even more damage. So the point of a mask like this is to protect you from inhaling that. So this mask is very simple, basically you've got your top strap that goes over the top of your head, and you've got your bottom strap for it that goes behind your head. Now, this is basically quite adjustable, um, in the sense of, you know, you adjust it on this buckle. The only issue with this mask, like with a load of these masks, is that, due to the age of the straps, if you try and adjust them too much, they sometimes break. So, uh, I've broken this one slightly, but thankfully not enough where I've permanently damaged the mask. So what I'm going to do is put the rear strap over first. There we go. So that, you can wear it just around your neck like that, which is pretty convenient, very lightweight. And then what you do is you obviously pull this one up once you've pre-adjusted it, get this bit over your nose, and then do that. Now, I'll take my glasses off, and as you can see, the mask seems to be tight to my face. I can't do a test, as said, with something like banana oil, because this is purely a particulate respirator. So it seems you've got two exhale valves, one there, one there, and I guess that makes your speech a bit clearer as well. I don't think that's actually a proper voice diaphragm. I think it's just two exhale valves. You've got the two intake valves. So let's put my glasses now back on over the top. They sit pretty well on there. And yeah, this isn't too uncomfortable for what it is. It's made from an interesting sort of rubber. Slightly flexible, but also quite tough. And yes, this would certainly do its job of protecting you from inhaling nuclear fallout. So, I don't have loads to say about these, um, because obviously, as a lot of you might know, Bulgaria during the Cold War um, seemed to... I assume Bulgaria was in the sort of communist bloc. Um, I'm pretty sure it was communist Bulgaria. But whether or not they were that standardised of Warsaw Pact equipment, I don't know. Because um, the two Bulgarian actual military gas masks I have are the PDE-1, if I remember the name right, which is an M17 clone, sort of M10 clone. And the PG-1, which is sort of an M65 Israeli M15 sort of clone. Um, and yeah, they're alright, they were absolutely covered in talc, but this is obviously a lot more of a civil defence sort of mask. And yeah, it would do its job. I said, I don't want to breathe through the filters too much because I really don't know what's in them and they're old. Um, but yeah, this would have done its job. Remember, the point of this is to protect you from nuclear fallout. So the idea was, you put this on and it stops you inhaling dust um, that's irradiated and deadly. Now, to make the difference obvious for people who don't really know between a gas mask and a sort of respirator dust mask, <clears throat> is that, obviously, a dust mask is to protect you from dust, a gas mask protects you from gas. So generally, a gas mask is more NBC rated, nuclear, biological and chemical. The idea is that the filter on it is designed to stop vapours getting through and all that sort of stuff, so it would also protect you from fallout. These would just protect you from fallout and particulate threats. So, if you're comparing this to something like a GP5, yes, the GP5 filter is more comprehensive because it's got charcoal in it as well as a particulate layer. But against something just like nuclear fallout, you don't need all that. The point is, I think, if you're making masks, you might as well spend a bit more on the masks and make them for NBC rated masks, rather than just stuff that stops nuclear particulates getting in. Because, you know, it makes sense to make one mask that gives you defence against biological, chemical, and nuclear weapons to the best degree a mask can, rather than um, 
you know, spending a load of money on a mask that can only protect you from inhaling dust, and that's about it. But these are fairly good for what they are. Um, it's one of those masks where now and again you spot something on eBay you had no idea existed. But it seems, yeah, Bulgaria did actually make a load of sort of just very simple dust masks. So not loads to say about this. Annoyingly, it came with an information sheet in Bulgarian. Um, but I've already lost that and I don't know where it is. It's probably in a drawer safe somewhere. Because I never throw that stuff away. It goes, it gets put somewhere where I think it will be safe. Then when I come to do the video on it, I can't find it. But yeah, these are good for what they are. It came with some spare filters, which again, I wouldn't use because you don't know what's in them. Um, other than just showing it in the video like this, but yeah, these are kind of an interesting Cold War novelty and, you know, other than the strap breaking during adjustment because of how old the rubber is, they're surprisingly good condition and the thing is, if it had modern filters on, I'd actually recommend this as a pretty good dust respirator you know, it um, works in a very similar way to a lot of the 3M half face masks and things like that it's just, um, you know, a lot more, you know, very cheap to make, I guess, and practical but as said, it's not a gas mask. I can't do sort of banana oil or deodorant tests with it because it's not a gas mask. It is just basically a particulate respirator to protect you against dust. Um, and it would have done that job absolutely fine because, you know, that's a very simple thing to do. As long as the mask's airtight to your face and it has a filter medium that would block most dusts, it's, it's a working dust mask. That's all there is to it. So, yeah, I guess if you're in your fallout shelter or in some sort of civil defence organisation, this is what the Bulgarians would have given you during the Cold War. Basically, it protects you from nuclear ash. That's about it. But, you know, it would actually protect you from inhaling nuclear ash, so it's done that job alright.